Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, if you remember my last video, I unboxed a bunch of things I brought back for me from, with me from California that belonged to my mom, including a couple of clocks. Um, and both of those clocks uh, need a little bit of work. Neither of them works perfectly. Uh, and today I want to take a look at one of them. There's one of them that I think there's at least a reasonable chance that I might be able to figure out what the problem is. But I got to remove the clock from the enclosure and observe it outside. Uh, and that's the grandfather clock. That's the one I'm going to work with. I know I can remove the clock from the enclosure because I did it when I brought it home. Um, one of the problems, uh, I think I mentioned this uh, on one of the videos, that the clock, the grandfather clock, um, was in my mom's apartment and one day she pulled it over on top of her when she was trying to wind it up. She had a couple problems falling uh, the last few months of her life and ended up in the hospital several times as a result of it. Well, this is one of the less severe times uh, but she ended up pulling the clock over on top of her uh, and as a result of that the one of the chains for one of the weights actually came off the track and I had to kind of pull the clock out of the uh, enclosure so I could see enough to restring that chain. So I know I can do that and I want to get it outside the, the enclosure so I can observe it better. And I want to get it to a point where I can actually operate it outside of the enclosure. So I'm going to build kind of, it's going to, this is going to have to start with me building a rack that has holes in the right place so the, the chains and the weight mechanism can work. And it's also got to have enough room that the pendulum can swing. So I'm going to start by building that and then we're going to pull this clock out of here, out of the enclosure and see if we can figure out what's wrong with it. And of course, this is the clock we're talking about here. This was the grandfather clock. Um, I'm hoping that, because I had to lay this thing on its back to transport it to Texas, I'm hoping that didn't damage it. I don't think it did, because it didn't seem to me it was working properly um, when it was even at my mom's apartment. So it's possible it got damaged in the fall, uh, even though the thing I was most concerned about would have been the glass. Um, the glass survived. I suspect what happened is the weights were all the way down on the ground and that's probably why they didn't break anything when they pulled it over because my mom was rewinding it. She isn't one of these people that would rewind it until it stopped working. And so I bet you that's what happened. The weights were all the way down on the bottom of the case and that's why none of the glass got broken when she pulled it over on her. And it would make sense that all three of the weights would have been down. You see right now, the only two parts of the uh, clock that are working are the center weight, which is the thing that controls the pendulum and makes the clock work, and this weight here, which is the thing that does a da-da-da-da part on it. But this is the weight here that does uh, the bonging at the hours, and that isn't going down at all because that part of the clock isn't working. So that's what we got to look at and figure out what's going on. And I'm hoping that just kind of analyzing the motion inside there over time, I'll be able to figure out how this thing is working and uh, hopefully figure out what I can do to fix it. All right, so I've rotated the clock around so I can get at the back of it because I want to take this panel off here. This is a panel that's kind of crucial to getting everything out. And the chimes themselves are attached to this panel through these two screws here. So I'm going to have to be careful when I pull this thing out just so I don't damage anything or get tangled up in anything because the chimes are on there too. All right, I got the back panel off and the chimes and I don't really need them for this part of the of the operation because I can verify that even that the chimes are working properly just by watching the hammers. And uh, so what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna leave this over here in the corner just out of the way so it stays safe. Uh, but now I have access to the back of the clock. And see, this is what the back of the clock looks like. And these are the hammers here and they probably need to be adjusted a little bit. Um, these are obviously the hammers here for the, uh, the bong part because they're all tied together. Uh, where each of these hammers here can be operated separately, which is how you do the ding 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 part. So, like I said, I got to pull this thing out of here, but when I was looking at this the first time, I realized these four screws here basically hold the whole clock mechanism in place. So, um, I'm going to remove the pendulum, I'm going to remove the weights, 
and uh, then we're gonna pull this thing out and kind of you can see there's a little gap right there in the wood where the chains from the uh, from the weights kind of go and then the pendulum itself is behind this thing so I need to create a platform very similar to this uh, that I can set the clock on and uh, operate it outside of the enclosure and have you know there be enough room for the pendulum to swing enough room for the weights to go up and yet still enough room for me to get around it and look at what's happening uh, and I think I can do that pretty easily and it actually looks like it's going to be simpler now than uh, what I was even originally thinking so um, I'm going to go build a quick little mount for this thing we're actually going to do this work in the house you know I got enough room over there right now that we could easily do that and so you know keep it keep it nice and comfortable in here because it's a little chilly outside but i'm gonna have to go build that rack and that got to come first all right a little bit of time has passed by now i've built the rack that's going to hold the clock mechanism outside of the uh, cabinet itself it's pretty simple but it's going to do i think the job now my main priority here was the precision here it's a little ugly over here a little ugly here but what mattered is this gap here it had to be half inch wide directly centered uh, on this three inch post because that's exactly the same thing that's in the uh, in the clock itself that su supports the entire weight of the clock. So that was important. It was also important that I make this level. Now I started leveling it out in the garage and I said, you know what? I'm not going to work on it in the garage. I'm going to work on it here. So I need to bring it into the house here and level it. Um, so, you know, I got onto it, got a bubble level on here, got it uh, level on all axes. You see, I didn't even attach the, the feet uh, with screws or bolts or anything like that. I just used a clamp. That way I can adjust it if I need to. Uh, but this is pretty solid now and it's ready to hold the clock. So the next step now is let's pull the clock out and uh, mount it onto my little display case here. All right, it's alive. Um, now I did. Now the clock is a couple hours at a time because it's been off for a couple hours while I built the rack. Interestingly enough, though, uh, it's working properly in the shelf here that I made. So that maybe just tells me this is a balance issue. Sometimes these analog clocks like this can be really, really sensitive to being a little bit out of balance, and that can just make something not work properly. See, I suspected that the problem was in this part of the mechanism here. You gotta remember there's like three different parts to the clock here. There's uh, the uh, central and main part here that does all the, the, the motions of the clock, the hour hand, the minute hand, and the moon clock. And then there's this part over here that deals with the da 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 part of the chimes. And then this part here deals with the, the bonging part. And so I've, I've long suspected that there was something wrong in here. And it's interesting, once I got the thing running again, I started advancing the clock. It's uh, showing one o'clock now, so I'm gonna move it to 115. And you can see this part starts doing, and there's the hammer, do 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 do, and then it stops. And then I'm gonna advance it to 130. It starts up again, da 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 da. Da, 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 da. And then that's done. Now we're going to go to 145. You can see it running through the cycle. There's the first part. The second part. The third part. And it stops, which is what it's supposed to do. And now when we go to 2 o'clock, it should do the fourth sequence over here, and it should bong twice. So there's the first sequence, second sequence, third, third sequence, and the fourth sequence. And then this starts happening. Bong, bong. So yeah, this, may, this thing may be all right. I'm gonna let this thing run a little bit this way. I may need to adjust the hammers a little bit, uh, but that doesn't look like that's terribly difficult of a thing to do. Uh, but I'm going to let this thing run a little bit and let's make sure it continues to chime when it should be. And uh, this may be fixed faster than we thought. I got to admit, as I'm watching it, the pendulum seems to have better motion too. Uh, I always 
concerned when it came here that it was, that the pendulum wasn't moving that decisively, but it actually seems to be uh, moving better. Maybe that was a leveling issue too. Maybe that's what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get that enclosure leveled before we put the clock mechanism back into it because that, that may be all it is. All right, a little time has passed now. It's about seven o'clock and um, I've actually kind of grown to really admire the engineering behind this clock. Um, there, there's so much in here and there's all these little mechanisms that are doing all these little subroutines and little bits and pieces. This is just a small part of the, of the mechanism that uh, makes like the part of the, the chimes happen. But it's all these little subroutines that happen in the front section. It's, it's like a computer program. It's really kind of amazing. I almost really want to take this thing apart and figure out exactly how it works, but there's no way I'm going to do that. But I've been, been kind of running it for the last few hours, and I noticed there was a problem. Um, it would get to the top of the hour, but it would only chime once, not the, not the number of times that it should have chimed based on what the hour was. And I was a little unsure what was going on, and I started actually kind of messing around with some of these subroutines in here. I don't know, that's the only thing I can think of what to call them, is these little little bits and pieces that do, do these complex calculations so that everything does what it needs to do when it needs to do it. But I started manipulating some of the levers in here, and at that point, it released a couple of things, and I think that reset everything, and all of a sudden now, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, the neck right after I did it, it was like 6:30, and it hit 6:30, and for the first time, you know, it did the the da 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 part right. Uh, but when it got to the, uh, when it, but it but it actually chimed uh, six times. So that told me, okay, it knows it's in the sixth hour. So hopefully, when it clears uh, the seventh hour at uh, at uh, seven o'clock, it would uh, do the right thing, and that would be good news. And it did it. Uh, it chimed seven times exactly how it should, but I think so. I think that means I got this thing working. So next step is to get it back into the case, and I think we'll pick that up tomorrow. Okay, so it's the next day now. I've let this thing run overnight, and I noticed while I was watching it run last night, it was running better than it's than it was before, but it wasn't a hundred percent yet. I wasn't entirely sure what it was, and in fact, I got up this morning. Uh, figuring, okay, well, we're just going to put this back in the case uh, and kind of study what's going on a little bit. What I did is I actually shot footage of the inner workings when the clock is chiming so I can kind of observe what's going on. And I thought, okay, well, we'll study this, see if I can figure out what's going on and what is or is not happening that's causing it to... Uh, not work properly. Like I said, uh, it's chiming sometimes, but not every time. So that is a definite improvement from before. But uh, as I got out here today and started looking at it a little closer, I realized, okay, well, it's still holding time. And there's a couple other little things that you probably haven't picked up on yet. But my sister told me at one point when they were moving the clock, they noticed that one of the numbers had come off. Now, it wasn't a problem because the number was just in the bottom of the clock. So I have to, so that's just one of these little things I gotta fix. But when I got it home and looked at it again, I said, no, actually there's two numbers because the four is missing also. And I couldn't find the four. And in fact, you know, I've been thinking, okay, well, it got lost somewhere along the way. I'm gonna have to go to the manufacturer, see if they can figure out what the number is and send me a replacement. Well, when I looked at the clock this morning, I realized that there was something on the floor here that I hadn't noticed before. There's the number four right there. So I think what happened uh, is that <clears throat> the number four, when it fell out, it may have fallen out when my mom pulled the clock over on her, on herself uh, that time. And I bet you the four went into the mechanism. <clears throat> and it was back here somewhere inside, and that was what was making the chimes not work because the last two times I've watched the chimes, uh, the chimes go at the top of the hour, they've, they've chimed right. And so, and the fact that this was found right underneath the part of the mechanism, the hands that handles the chimes, um, that just lets me know that, you know, at least lets me suspect that that's what happened, that when the piece fell off the clock, it went into the mechanism somewhere and it was preventing it from, uh, from 
completing its cycle correctly. And then I guess probably me jostling things around in the process of pulling it out, maybe loosened it. And when it started chiming a little bit, that allowed maybe the weight to pull the mechanism down a little bit and that dislodged it and it fell out overnight. So I don't know, last two hours, this thing has worked perfectly. So um, we're gonna stick with the original plan. We're gonna put it back in the case, but this may be the last time I have to pull it out. So that's a good thing. Now, I also spent a bunch of time uh, yesterday balancing this thing. So this thing's going to be level. Hopefully that will help uh, somewhat too. But even if it does appear that maybe the problem wasn't balanced, but because of something stuck in the mechanism, it still is a good idea to start with a level clock, right? All right, the clock is back in the enclosure. Everything's buttoned up a little bit. I still have the side off of it so I can get access to the chimes. It's possible the hammers for the chimes got bent a little bit in the movement. So if they're not aligned properly, I wanna be able to get in there and adjust that. But I think for the most part, we're, uh, we're finished with this. If we did, in, if we did indeed um, have a problem with a number stuck in the mechanism and it works fine for the next couple hours, then uh, we can declare this thing fixed. Now, I do want to go over to like Home Depot and get some glue that I can glue the numbers back on. But uh, let's see, the clock was stopped for about 15 minutes while I reinstalled it, so let's... Okay, so those appear to be lined properly. So, let's get it to the right time here because it's about 12.20 right now. So we're going to watch this for a while and see what's going on, but I think we got this thing fixed. I'm going to leave the little labels on the weights uh, for now until I'm, I've verified that I don't have to pull them off again. And, and the truth is there's a little tape residue on some of them too that want to clean up at some point. But um, if this thing works for the next couple hours, it should be good to go. So um, like I said, I'm going to run over to Home Depot, get some glue to reattach the numbers and uh, then I think we're gonna wrap this video up. Okay, so I'm back from Home Depot and I found some super glue that I think is gonna do a good job. This is stuff that's, uh, that's that it dries kind of quickly or it sets up kind of quickly, which is good because I don't wanna lay the clock on its back in order to keep the numbers in place. And if I could just hold them in place for 35, 45 seconds, something like that, and uh, it sets up to the point where it can hold itself, that's a good thing. Uh, this is also something that's uh, designed to work on metal, which is what I need to do because the back plate here, the face plate of the clock is metal, and the numbers themselves look like they're made of brass. So I think this is going to be the good stuff. Also, this is kind of a gel versus a liquid, so it won't run that much. And that's another thing I want to uh, be careful of. I don't want the glue squirting out the side so you can see the glue. Uh, on the face dial. That just doesn't look pretty, I think. So I gotta do it very careful and the gel should help me do that. So I'm gonna install these numbers now and I'll let you see what that looks like in a minute. All right, I got the four and the eight attached pretty well. Uh, the glue actually uh, did bind pretty quickly. It was within 10 or 15 seconds. It was to the point I could take it off. So that was good. Um, now we just gotta let it dry for a little while. And I actually heard it uh, chime at one o'clock and it sounds like it's working properly. So um, I'm going to button up the side of it, put the side back on it, and close this thing up. And I think we're pretty much done because at this point, uh, you know, I still want to hear it cycle a couple of more times, make sure it, it chimes at two and three and, and four, and make sure it does the right thing. Because even when it wasn't working, you know, uh, before, I, before, the, before the number dropped out of it, um, it would still chime one at once every hour. So that was still an improvement over what was there, but I wanna hear it chime two, I wanna hear it chime three before I declare victory. So uh, I think, like I said, we got this thing uh, 100%. I gotta spend a little bit more time calibrating it because it's still running a little bit fast, but that's the least of the issue. That's easy to do. So uh, We'll just kind of work on that over the next few days and weeks, and we'll get this thing dialed in. So anyway, I think that is the end of my video for today. Thank you, as always, for watching, and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.